like to apologize that first session I couldn't attend because of some reasons. So I'm not aware what transpired in the first session. Among the conveners of Gandhi study society in various colleges, as well as all of you who are here today. Now, what I would like to do, because you know, I feel wonderful to be back in Delhi after three, four years, basically the pandemic hit, and I've been finally open and the video of the constructed in place, but I was not being able to participate. So it gives me a great pleasure to be back in Delhi in this hall. I'm also delighted to see my old friend, Sham Sundar Chaturvedi. Similarly, you have 
religious and ethnic violence. Of course, one can say that you know this is part of the civil society, but nonetheless, this is also a very important form of violence in today's world. And finally, we cannot totally close our eyes to another set of issues which are emerging due to this entire process of globalization which is sweeping across the world. Of course, we are also told that we are living now in the age of deglobalization, uh, but nonetheless, globalization has been the fact of life uh, you know, uh, in the last two, three decades. So how globalization can be also seen as something which is driving different types of violence and multiple forces, which not directly so these are the four or five set of issues which I'd like to uh, throw up in here for discussion. So let's start the first issue, the question of state violence, because you must be knowing the Gandhian utopia over the stateless utopia. There was no space for the state and state institutions. But then of course we are also aware that Gandhi's second base was is a society which had some form of this. Like it was Plato's second best. So in that way, you don't have very systematic account of the state structure under which the people will be basically engaging with multiple activities in life. But nonetheless, we have some you know examples, some instances, some reflections in that. So in today's context, how do you look at it? Because there are different types of state violence. State violence is not happening only through state apparatus, but state violence also happens through multiple activities in which the state is an important, uh, you know, participant. That is perhaps that if the state closes its eyes to multiple, you know incidents of you know violence, gender violence in society, the class violence in society, class violence in society, technological violence, violence emerging from the technology is a very important instance which can be associated with the state. So it is in this context I would invite like your attention, I would like to, you know, like to hear all of you that how do you reflect on this issue and what Yes, so you can raise your hand and then you can. Yes, sir. please identify yourself. Good afternoon. Good evening, sir. I'm Mohit from Rajani College, University of Delhi. And how I see state violence? Violence could be defined as a form of physical or mental abuse uh, uh, through verbal or uh, physical actions. And the state violence, as you said, that state violence could be through apparatus, it could be through the actions of the state as well because there might be some policies which uh, harm the identities or uh, sentiments of any other community. For example, for instance, we can see in Sri Lanka that uh, when Sinhalis, the civil law between Sinhalis, before that, the Sri, Lanka, uh, the Sri Lanka government, which was dominated by uh, Sinhalis only, uh, they proposed or they passed an act which dominated, uh, which were dominating the Tamilians, the Tamilians which were deciding. Moreover, uh, regime in uh, the uh, Soviet Union, all uh, form, uh, the former USSR, now the, now currently is Russia, also created some kind of uh, dissentiments uh, among the people, civil people, because they were feeling backward when they were comparing it with the West, with America, USA and its allies. So uh, in this in this case, the case is uh, state violence. When I come back to gender violence, uh, cultural and technological violence, they are interlinked with each other, uh, keeping apart uh, technological because technological violence has come after 1990s when globalization has started. Globalization when was legalized, it came into existence. Uh, though it was there from ancient times, we had Silk Route, we had uh, secrets. But uh, it was not too much, or it, there was not a terminology for that, and it was not defined for, uh, there was not the de definition for it as well. Uh, so people are saying that they, it was a trick. But after 1990s, the time point, globalization, and this globalization led to 
टेक्नोलॉजिकल वायलेंस टेक्नोलॉजिकल वायलेंस बोले सर ऑन दिस क्वेश्चन आई थिंक द आइडिया ऑफ स्टेट वायलेंस इट इज ऑल द मोर इंटरलिंक विद अदर काइंड ऑफ वायलेंस एज गर्ल टू ऑल्सो पॉइंटेड आउट इट्स अबाउट स्ट्रक्चरल वायलेंस थ्रू द स्टेट एंड बाय द स्टेट सो दिस डायरेक्ट वायलेंस इनडायरेक्ट वायलेंस ऑल मतलब इट्स ऑल अ पार्ट ऑफ स्टेट वायलेंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल वायलेंस ऑल्सो पार्ट बिकॉज एज इट सेट इज लीगलाइज राइट सो फर्स्टली आई सी इट एज इंटर रिलेटेड स्ट्रक्चर सो ऑन दैट काइंड ऑफ वायलेंस आई थिंक Uh, how Gandhi would have responded to it is that, say, technology is rising so much. It has become a state instrument of power. Technology is largely a global instrument, a state instrument of power. So I think how Gandhi would have responded to it is to point out the very uh, violence on the morality that it uh, affects. For example, I, uh, artificial artificial intelligence has taken over all of us. There are many good points about it, but the way it has been used. the idea that has been associated so gandhi always focused on manual labor along with mental labor it it, it took us to the ground it 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 grounds us so i think the idea that of state violence it all the in the part where there's there is an attack on morality of humans where it has been used in a very uh, say unethical way so i think he would have pointed out that he would have surely understood the benefits because we cannot live without technology and i'm pretty sure don he would have recognized that also it is impossible we use mics right so but the either morality behind it which is corrupting the humans which is which which has sort of taken away the ground away from us which aren't also points out that the ground is breaking so i think he would have pointed out and asked us to work on I'm a student at Center for Political Studies, JNU. So, adding on to what Arunima said, uh, state propagates violence directly and indirectly, directly um, through its policies and indirectly through uh, like judicial violence, like violence in detention centers and etc. The uh, technological violence in the form of surveillance, like nowadays, uh, surveillance has been uh, state-sponsored uh, surveillance has uh, been at the forefront. so uh, i think gandhi stands would be as we know that gandhi was very critical of modern civilization and state is state nowadays is the primary propagator of modern civilization so gandhi would have been very critical of the modern state today because uh, like he could predict in 1936 in hind swaraj that technology would be the end of human uh, civilization it would corrupt human beings which is uh, which should not be the case so uh, we should like emphasize on morality and uh, like as she said that morality and ethics should be the ground of human behavior so
address you know, become a private thing. And Gandhi's entire uh, you know, experiment with this community ownership, community life uh, can be very important uh, way to reflect on the issues which are arising from this property in the Yes. Who next?
How many scientists could afford to do this thing today? In fact, in this pandemic, we are hearing a lot of things about that vaccine. That already those vaccines were released and now many people are suffering on account of that. So therefore, the Gandhian take on technology can also be seen through this frame, through this prism. That is the spiritual prism. That how you relate your inside to the outside world, yes. So one thing that uh, on the same thing I just want to add, uh, the Gandhian idea on whether it's on the caste, definitely we should criticize if that's not fitting into our own realities. But the thing about Gandhi on particular in technology, we should uh, see it into uh, going into in-depth uh, understanding. Like today also we are suffering from technology and I believe what Gandhi said at that time, maybe he was uh, not uh, true about the hospital, uh, the railway and the whole thing is out. But today what he said, the same thing are basically replicated into our society. We can put hospital ki zagam AI likh denge and you would find everything is exactly same thing. Hospital ki zagam robotics likh denge. We are seeing that the, the way recently, pichle do teen saal mein, uh, kitni companyon ne apne workers ko lay off kiya hai. So we are seeing that thing uh, that coming true. So basically, I think we should not go into the court centric study of Gandhi. Rather, we should go into the idea centric study of Gandhi. Basically, the basically thinkers what they do that they see certain plot lines. Emerging, and on the basis of that, they basically talked about certain patterns which will emerge in future. So those fault lines sometimes become wider, sometimes those fault lines are also breached. So we have to basically uh, reflect on this. Yes, Dr. Uh, Mishra. Well, I think we cannot discuss Gandhi ignoring the fundamentals. Gandhi was not representing the state. He was fighting against the state. And he fought with moral leadership. When you are saying that state sponsored violence, everywhere you don't have state sponsored violence. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be wrong. Whether it is Manipur or where, you would say state sponsored, I would agree. Public leader, they are also involved. Okay. So, as uh, Dr. Chah was saying, that during pandemic, I wrote somewhere that had Gandhi been alive during this time, what would have been his role? He would have been on the side of the workers. He would have opposed the Supreme Court, which did not consider you know, millions of people walking all throughout the night. So his posture would have been against the state. But here, in most of the cases, you are finding that the local leaders, they are not very clean at heart. In any demonstration, you take it, whether it is <coughs> or anywhere, I don't say that all the demonstrations, public leadership, all are very fair. Okay? So, yes, so Mr. Yes. you are yes. hitting at this leadership dimension. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Dr. Yes. 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 I just want to put two or three things in place. Number one, about the inconsistent. Gandhi himself had written that he does he's not concerned with consistency. And he says that if you find that I have contradicted myself, just take my later thought uh, to be true. And he also says, uh, like Emerson said, consistency is the hot bottom of little minds. So, and then not only that, uh, Gandhi it was always going from truth to truth. Like we all do. For example, when I was a teenager, I really needed to go to a disco, have fun, let my head down. It was something great. Today, tell me to go to a good morning. So, you know, you grow from truth to truth. There's no such thing as absolute truth. And also another thing I must tell you, that you have been told that we can't say that Gandhi is saying that Swami is so good. Gandhi, wherever he is, he will hurt you if you do that. Gandhi is first part. We are so scared that somebody will make Gandhism after me. There's no ism in Gandhi. It's truth. Truth is always evolving. So please let us not you know, take Gandhi as what he has said and that you have to do that I thought it's all. So I think he has to get it as that by that time. One last thing, especially as you, Sajjan rightly pointed out, 
so like religion and ethnic religious violence and equality we need to identify the kind of religion one is associated to and to point out associated with the institutional and dogmatic part of the religion which becomes an instrument of violence this is the empirical evidence of how religion has been used for example say the sabrimala case or the manipur issue has been taken up so these are the dogmatic ideas of uh, uh, institutionalized say religion i think it's more towards a principle ambedkar also said that in in religion there, there are some principles which are universal in nature again that that kind of faith that would ground it so if we talk about fear parai it's not the utne meri baat nahi maani aur mujhe jaisa lag raha hai ki tum part nahi kar rahe ho tum wo sari baatein nahi maan rahe ho to tumhara fear ho raha hai is it not more towards the idea that religion is what will take you towards the truth that will all take you towards the truth shown me kehne hain jo ki ultimate goal hota hai so i think uh, what he, his take of religion of oh, religion violence would be that if we disassociate this kind of religion that religious dogmatic religious practices on which such violences are based what we get is the essence of every religion which is a pretty sure universal in nature because it is based in empathy and truth so i think you would have not institutional not institutional Uh, that is the problem, uh, and that's why perhaps Gandhi becomes more important today. So they hardly anything which is uh, being left uh, in outside the domain of institutional religion. Whatever all outside institutional uh, religion is gradually being drawn into the frame of mind, right? And that's why uh, this is. And that's why you know today the kind of alignment you can see between the uh, you know ethnic identity and the religious identity. Uh, today it is very difficult to remain religious without being ethnic. So this is a basically a challenge, uh, and that was not true in the Gandhi era. I think you have to perhaps say something. Yeah. Yes, anyone else? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sense of justice and injustice. The most of the religious violence which we saw which we find in uh, particularly the West Asian region is emerging out of this sense of justice and injustice uh, frame. Uh, in fact, what the West has been calling the, the new Cold War, you know, class of civilizations. Uh, if you look at it from the perspective of the Muslims of the West Asia, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the West, it is mostly, you know, emerging out of their sense of justice and injustice. That this entire modernity was gathered by the knowledge system which was supplied by, you know, Arabia, Persia and also India. And the same knowledge system was basically repackaged and was attributed to, you know, the entire ancient Greek and Rome in name of Renaissance. And uh, the place from where those knowledge system went was declared backward and the same knowledge system is going back to civilize them. I think that basically leads to this sense of justice and justice. And that can apply to any society, not only in the West Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, uh, again on Gandhi's idea on religion and uh, the idea of civic liber uh, secularism that he talks about, the Eka Dharma that he talks So it uh, seems very much of that goes into that ancient roots. Like uh, we had at the time of their, uh, we, we had Buddha on one side, we have Mahavir Jain and then we have at the same time we have Charvaka, we had uh, Ajita Kesa Kambling. So Indian tradition has been always of dialogue, okay. as you uh, put it rightly. So, on the other hand, when we look at the West, West has always a crusades fighting within Christianity and out then uh, fighting with the uh, fight with the Jews and then with the uh, Muslims and all things. So that fights has been uh, part of the Western religious understanding that the homogenization is something that they see as the first uh, point of being religious that we need to be homogenized. That. That's now that they, the US that was a uh, the land of nomads, so we can say that that is a secular country, but still we know how the France uh, had that uh, conflict within that the secularism they were as they are fighting, and uh, though it called apne apne apko liberal, but today we see that in India we are again basically taking those ideas from West, and now we are going on the path of homogenization. Indian path has been never homogenization. Whether uh, now we see this talk about medieval ages, we look if medieval. If we give this example ki hundreds or thousands of uh, Turks and they came and they basically taken our land. If they wanted, they could have they basically ruined whole of the land. But how we survive, this shows that ki the, whether somebody coming from middle or whether somebody coming from West Asia, anywhere, they get assimilated into this uh, system. So we had always this uh, uh, history of celebrating differences. No homogenizing, no tolerating, but Thakur sir again again often says that the idea of tolerance is not our idea. Our idea is always being that just accept them as if they are. And this is I think somewhere that come from the kingdom of God that Gandhi had uh, influence on him that the kingdom of God is within you. And I think that's the idea of secularism that goes way back into the ancient tradition of dialogue. So this was the uh, most basic disagreement between Gandhi and Samarthar. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the way Savarkar diagnosed the entire colonialism in India, that the entire nation got feminized and the religion could not become Semitic in Hinduism, and that's why perhaps we got colonized. Gandhi had also a different thing. What you were saying, this, uh, you know, the pluralist uh, you know, reason of society. So, anyway, yes, uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Hello, sir, myself. Hello sir, myself Pusha Kumari, a first year undergrad student from Delhi University. Sir, Which uh, Sir, IPC was with the Indrapis College from Okay, Delhi. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I just want to keep Gandhi's ideas. They have written in their book, My Religion, that there are many people in the world and they are not perfect. Then how do we expect that there is a perfect religion? Your journey is this way that you have to keep your religion in your religion. Not that you are living on the basis of religion. तो उनके बातों को समझकर हम रिलीज़न वॉल्यूम्स को खत्म कर सकते हैं और उन्होंने एथिस्ट पे एक बात कही है कि अगर आप अपने आप को एथिस्ट कंसीडर करते हैं इसका मतलब ये है कि आप सांस तो लेते हैं और अपने नाम पर विश्वास नहीं करते हैं तो मैं यही कहना चाहूँगी कि उनके फिलॉसफी उनकी बातों को ज़रा ध्यान से पढ़े और जो रिलीजन वॉल्यूम्स है क्योंकि आगे चल कर हम ही हम ही यूथ इस देश को चलाने वाले या फिर जो भी हमारा ही काम होगा तो उनकी आइडिया उनके बुक्स को पढ़कर हम ज़्यादा अच्छा कर सकते हैं 
और ये अभी बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है क्योंकि जो इलीगल वॉयेंस एक ऐसा वॉयेंस है जो देश में देखा जा रहा है बहुत ज्यादा बहुत ज्यादा बहुत ज्यादा जी सर गांधी जी ने कहा था मैं डॉक्टर सुधीर हूँ केंद्रीय विद्यालय में अध्यापक हूँ गांधी जी के गांधी जी ने कहा था कि मैं भारत को ऐसा बनाना चाहता हूँ जहाँ अमीर से अमीर और गरीब से गरीब व्यक्ति को ऐसा लगे कि यह उसी का देश है इस इन संक्षिप्त बातों में पूरे संपूर्ण सार छिपा हुआ है जैसे कि हिंसा के संदर्भ में उन्होंने कहा कि सर्वीर संपदा वर्तमान परिप्रेक्ष्य में बिना सर्व का संपदा लोग चाहते हैं कि हमारा शॉर्ट वर्ड तरीके से हम धन को इकट्ठा कर लें ये बहुत बड़ा क्राइम है हिंसा है श्रम बिन संपदा बिना श्रम का हम अगर किसी चीज को हासिल करना चाहते हैं अगर हासिल करने की चेष्टा करते हैं तो हिंसा है इन पर हमारा विचार होना चाहिए खासकर नए लोगों को कि बिना श्रम का हम किसी भी चीज की प्राप्ति का साधन न माने क्योंकि अगर यह साधन हमारा रहेगा तो हमारा साध्य अच्छा नहीं हो सकता है बड़े बुजुर्गों ने भी कहा है कि अगर हम अच्छा अन्न खाएंगे तो हमारा अच्छा विचार होगा दूसरा उन्होंने कहा है कि नैतिकता बिन व्यापार हिंसा है अगर आपको मोरलिटी नहीं है नैतिकता नहीं है आप व्यापार करते हैं कहा जाता है कि व्यापार करते हैं तो भाई वो अपने मनमानी तरीके से किसी भी वस्तु का दाम वसूलते हैं उपभोक्ता से दाम वसूलते हैं लेकिन इसमें गांधी जी ने कहा है कि जो आपका श्रम लगता हो किसी वस्तु को खरीदने में उसको ट्रांसपोर्टेशन में जो और बेचने में जो आपकी श्रम शक्ति लगती है उसके आधार पर उस वस्तु का दाम तय करें तो हमारा व्यापार में नैतिकता होना चाहिए वो वो अगर नैतिकता व्यापार में नहीं है तो हिंसा है मानवता बिन विज्ञान विज्ञान बेहताशा बढ़ रहा है विज्ञान के कारण आइटम बम बनाए जा रहे हैं झगड़े बढ़ रहे हैं लोग हम विपन खरीद रहे हैं एक दूसरे को डरा रहे हैं या अपने को सेफ्टी करने के लिए कर रहे हैं तो इसमें मानवता खत्म हो रहा है हमारे नए साथियों को इस पर प्रयास करना चाहिए कि मानवता हमारा अस्थिर रहे और विज्ञान भी अस्थिर रहे क्योंकि विज्ञान समाप्ति के पश्चात आध्यात्मिकता की बातें आती है गांधी जी ने विज्ञान को भी सराहा और लेकिन आध्यात्मिकता को भी उन्होंने कभी दरकिनार नहीं कहा कहा उन्होंने धन के साथ आध्यात्मिकता विचार के साथ आध्यात्मिकता और कार्य शैली के साथ भी आध्यात्मिकता को प्राथमिकता दी उसके बाद चरित्र बिन ज्ञान बहुत लोग ज्ञानी हो जाते हैं बड़े बड़े प्रवचन करते हैं लोगों को समझाते हैं लोगों को अपने विचार से अवगत कराते हैं परंतु उस व्यक्ति का अगर नैतिक चरित्र का आंकलन किया जाए तो बिल्कुल सामाजिक परिप्रेक्ष्य से भिन्न होता है तो यह भी हिंसा है तो मेरा कहने का मतलब है कि सामाजिक हिंसा का प्रमुख कारण हम लोग भी हैं कहीं ना कहीं हम अगर गांधी जी के विचारों को आत्मसात कर लें थोड़ा बहुत भी मैं विद्यालय में पढ़ाता हूँ केंद्रीय विद्यालय में अध्यापक हुआ लेकिन प्रतिदिन असेंबली से गांधी जी के सारा जीवन कुछ विचार जैसे जितना जीवन सादा होगा तनाव उतना कम होगा ढेर सारी बातें बच्चों से करते हैं तो इसका प्रभाव है हम लोग आज यहाँ इकट्ठा हुए हैं जितने साथी हमारा ये प्रयास होना चाहिए कि ग्राट रूप से गांधी जी के विचारों को फैलाएं लोगों को बीच बताए कि गांधी जी जी का विचार क्या था तभी हम देश में समरसता स्थापित कर सकते हैं हिंसा को कम कर सकते हैं हिंसा को समाप्त नहीं कराने का हमारी ताकत है लेकिन हिंसा को कम कर सकते हैं तो हम जितने भी साथी हैं गांधी जी को बड़े विचार हैं अगर थोड़ा विचार भी लोगों के बीच में बांट सकें तो ये हमारा कर्तव्य प्रणेता होगा पानी जो आपने कहा जो ब्रेड लेबर डिग्निटी ऑफ लेबर गांधी के लिए ब्रेड लेबर किसी का टेक्नोलॉजी को देखने का एक नजर हो सकता है किस तरह से उसको बेकार अल्टरनेटिव लेबर टेक्नोलॉजी है वो डिनाइल ऑफ वीमेन डिग्निटी ऑफ ह्यूमन लेबर है यस एनी रिपोर्ट तो थर्ड राउंड यस हाँ दो हाथ है यस थ्री ओके आप 
and inter-community dialogue. So dialogue was not only about debate and discussion, dialogue was the process of moving from Abhidhya to Abhidhya. Abhidhya to move from Abhidhya to Abhidhya. So that we are missing because dialogue we also have to be religious leaders who are not exposed to the higher ideas of different domains of knowledge. So this must be the issue of the idea that we want to address. And that is important. My question was also when the server was talking about the Myanmar country and the Tamil side. Because the question is how can market be moved up? Because Adam Smith has talked about uh, the ethical dimension of market. Even Gandhi has talked about trustees. But can market be more than that sense or market can be ethical? We can specialize without the kind of or how the capitalism has to be Yes, Varun and small thing I want to, I, it's just small reply with due respect to Dr. Tussar Misra sir. Uh, on the question of leadership, I believe it's not about the leadership, it's about us. We are morally corrupted and I just want to give a small example how we are morally corrupted. In our schools, we are set to be IAS officer, be IPS officer, be engineer, doctor and everyone in school knows the most powerful person on this earth today is doctor. Uh, is, he is not neither a doctor nor a master. We don't know about his educational qualifications. We don't ask for. He is the most powerful one in this country. He has not done anything in that way. We don't go anywhere. Ki, sir, aapka qualification yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sir, that's it. But sir, this is I, I call this uh, that could be I agree or not. I call it a historical conspiracy that we had done with our uh, our children. The parents have done with, with their children and 
uh, teachers are done with their students we never tell them to be a politician and this is the reason why we have nepotism this is why the, we have corruption if a youngster goes into the politics he either would be anti nationalist he would be called anything and any the, the, that is the very reason where gandhi becomes very relevant gandhi says this thing politics is cannot be separated out from your life politics would be always there and politics is not just a way of winning some election or something politics shows you and uh, basically shows your conception of justice to you and as you said gandhi for, for gandhi the justice is not just about the judiciary and the court and distribution things so that's i feel ki that's where the leadership is getting felt because we are never telling our children to be a neta and every neta is telling their children to go oxford padh ke aao harvard padh ke aao banna to neta hai that's why nepotism hai because they are saying their children to be a leader be a neta and we are not saying and then we are saying ki uh, politicians to itna ganda hai and they are doing this and they are corruption they are nepotism and all things so i believe this is somewhere in our education system our knowledge system where we have to fix it and till then we are not going to teach our students to be a neta we are not going to change this country we are not going to change this system at all this is my personal uh, conception only this thing yes philosopher becomes the king or king with or king learns the philosophy you will never have an and this is very interesting gandhi has translated uh, this dialogue uh, socratic dialogue into gujarati and somewhere i think that idea has been replicated from there only ki why the philosophy knowledge and politics is very important the greek system was very politicized and gandhi has basically uh, i could not exactly name that satya satya veer ki katha something that is now related like politics is like a politics name Oh, devil, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think the intervention that could be made up uh, regarding all the discourse that you're building in all this. Perhaps I wonder that you know, Gandhi's association of nature with social. I think that Gandhi is somehow is attributing value to nature. For instance, uh, Bihar uh, earthquake that happened in Chandwara. There has been this fears in between Gandhi and Tipu. And Gandhi is uh, saying that, you know, because unpredictability is sort of followed in this uh, area this is a curse that is all the core is negating that the core is following a very rationalist narrative and gandhi is following a very a different kind of rationality which is definitely not the modernist rationality i think the intervention that should be made up here is including the elements of caste as well as social and religious is that how do we conceptualize gandhi's equating of nature and social natural law and social law and attributing value to nature for instance in the contemporary discourse everybody has said i mean not everybody but people must have come across work by dibya devi in you know. her so what she is basically calling i mean the point that she is trying to problematize in gandhi is that gandhi is somehow justifying contemporary hierarchy on the notion that on a certain metaphysical notion that whatever comes in natural setting is valuable and should be somehow justified i mean that's her allegation i'm not sort uh, of substantiating that and i'm sort of i'm critique and i'm i have a critical stance to that divya dubey divya dubey so i think more focus should be done on uh, i mean from our group that how can we sort of understand this natural and social dichotomy and the metaphysical discourse that gandhi has been gandhi has a certain metaphysics for instance uh, somebody is talking about tolstoy and you know Tolstoy has been a fierce critic of materialism, and he has espoused a certain idealism. I think a lot has to be done on Gandhi's conceptualization of a certain implicit metaphysics, 
concerning all these metaphysical positions of ideas and materialism and its implications, not just on religion, but on caste. So I think more pondering has to be done. Yes. Who else? ऐसे वर्ग को एक अभिव्यक्ति व्यक्त करने की एक आशा जगी है ये मैं मानता हूँ अपने विद्यालय में मैं देखता हूँ कि हिंदी का जो महत्व आया है बढ़ा है तो हिंदी को प्रायोजित करना चाहिए उसके कंडीशंस क्या हैं ये तो सरकार की अपनी मानसा है सरकार अपने तरीके से तय करेंगे गांधी जी ने भी कहा है कि हिंदी के बिना हमारी अभिव्यक्ति अधूरा है तो अंग्रेजी के साथ साथ हिंदी को भी हम लोग प्रयोजित as a democratized current, it's not a system. But that is more important. And this is perhaps our problem, that Gandhi could never have endorsed the kind of Swadeshi current which you do. Because in the name of Swadeshi current, we homogenize. And Gandhi would have never endorsed any homogenized knowledge system. So I mean, that kind of pluralism, how we celebrate in knowledge, through practice, perhaps that could have been uh,
sir, so when we talk about Gyan Swaraj, so I feel that the, uh, the purpose of Gyan is to serve the human beings rather than serving only a particular section of the society. And if uh, and the understanding that we have today of knowledge is has become very limited. So like we are more into technological advancement and technological knowledge. I think Gandhiji would not have, would have never supported that sort of knowledge system. For him, knowledge would have something that could help realize human beings their full potential. As Hannah Arendt also says that no, uh, she doesn't use the word knowledge for it, but she talks about freedom of action. That what is freedom? It is a freedom of action that it allows you to invent new things, as Arunima also said. So knowledge is uh, something. Uh, knowledge should be such that it allows everyone to experience their freedom of action, rather than uh, rather than making us, uh, you know, subservient to particular sections of the society. So I think that should have been uh, should be the what I feel Gandhiji would have called Gyan Swaraj. Yes, so, so as per me, the so-called Western education, which has been embarked in within us, is not sufficient for the youth today because we have been limited to the religion, we have been limited to the communalism, secularism, and all. And the problem is that we can't even realize our life skills. We cannot even have an education on life skills. So the places are opening, the doors are opening for that. But still many of us are uh, in the fields where we don't know where to reach and how to reach to the life skill development. Moreover, Gandhiji also said that uh, relig uh, religion may be different, but have the same goal. So here he emphasized, he especially emphasized that uh, one should understand uh, but to understand and read the religious tolerance, uh, this education would help him. Moreover, it would also create Sarv Dham, Sarv uh, Bhav. And uh, last but not the least, he wanted that every every village uh, should in, uh, should be integrated with each other, the rural, irrespective of rural and urban areas, so that the knowledge can be introduced. So he refers to knowledge as the education, as for me. Thanks a lot. Okay. So, yeah. Yes, Dr. Uh, just a very small observation to our article of Ashram to Kali Kali. And the other thing is that Siddharth to be in the end is to Bante, Jawala, Nehru, Jawala, or Sanskrit for Dr. Kali or Buddha as a national language. That is acceptable to North India and South India. Sanskrit, uh, would it not have been a part of the world? But the language, the language debate was perhaps the most uh, complex and complicated debate in the Constituent Assembly. And it was settled at the end uh, because at that time it was becoming uh, difficult to arrive at any consensus on language. So three language formula perhaps was the only way you know, the Jud Biram was a Tata, the Yuma. So that was a truce. Right? I had debate, but I said, I have a And sir, uh, it was Gandhiji only who started this Congress ka provincial committees on the basis of the language. So uh, from the, it was very evident from the very first when he uh, worked on in 20s, Nagpur. So 20s, uh, he had this conception that if we have to unite, because India was not a nation the way we were are today looking. It, it was very difficult task and even for Gandhi, it was very difficult task to basically combine the whole of the units that later on Sardar Patel has done that. So basically, uh, uh, the, that, uh, that organization of provincial units say many things about Gandhi's understanding of language and the Matra Bhasa's idea, ki why we need to basically appreciate diversity. And language is one of that way of uh, creation, and it's not merely a way of expression according to Gandhi, I believe. Yeah. So I think that, uh, thank you, and uh, due to the paucity of time, we have to end this uh, part of the deliberations. Uh, if there's one issue remain, uh, that was the last issue which we wanted to discuss, uh, that was globalization and kind of violence. And Gandhi, of course, can be a very important reference point for that. Someone mentioned here the you know, high period economy, the 
map race for GDP. In fact, Mishraji talks about cross happiness index. I think that can be a better way to measure society's progress and development, but that is not happening. So, globalization ke karan kya kya ho rahe hai? The sectoral imbalance, a lot of things are happening. And that is going against this entire uh, discourse which perhaps we have covered in the chapter. Anyway, so I will uh, stop here and thanks a lot. Thanks again to all of you for participating. And reading it through your valuable insights.